Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the intersection of two linked list problems. Write a program to find the node at which the intersection of two singly linked lists begins. So for example, they give you list A and list B, um, and they want you to find the node where they intersect, in this case, C1. In this example, they intersect at node A, because this is list A and this is list B, they intersect at this node. In this case, they intersect at node 2. This is list A, list B. Okay, and in this case, there's no intersection, so you return null. So how can we solve this problem? The brute force approach is to use two nested loops. One, the outer loop is going to be for this list A, so for every node in list A, we're going to have an inner loop that's going to compare every node in B with each node in A. So we will have first A1 compared with this, then with this, this, and this, and then we didn't find the intersection, so we move to A2, then we compare A2 with B1, B2, and so on, until we find the intersecting node. This is the brute force approach, and the time complexity is big O of m times n, where m is the length of A, and n is the length of B. The space complexity would be constant, big O of 1. Can we do better? Because the time complexity is slow, is quadratic. Can we do better? Yes, we can do better. Another solution is to use a data structure, like a hash set. So we can store all the nodes in A in a hash set, because the hash set allows us to retrieve an element in constant time. So after we put all these nodes in a hash set, we can iterate through the B, through B list, and then we can check if we have a node in the hash set. If we find it, then that node is the intersection. The time complexity would be big O of n plus big O of m plus n where m is the length of a and n is the length of b. But there's a downside. The, the space complexity would also be big O of m plus n. Actually, it would be big O of m, because there are m nodes in a. So can we do better? Can we actually reduce the space complexity? And the answer is yes. What we can do is that we can calculate the length of a and the length of b, and then we can calculate the difference in length and then move the pointer uh, of the longer list to point at the same to be at the same distance than the pointer in a so we have pointer a at the beginning and b we move it here after we calculate the difference we know how many steps we have to go to move b so that it is at the same distance from c1 so after that we just have to move the A pointer and the B pointer at the same time, and eventually they're going to intersect. The solution requires big O of m plus n time and only big O of one space, because you're not using any data structure, you just have two pointers. And this is an acceptable solution, and we can also improve the solution even more. We can simplify the code because we don't even have to calculate the length up front. We don't have to calculate the length of A and the length of B. If we simply use the two pointers in a clever way. So what we can do is that we can have the A pointer here and the B pointer here. And then when A gets to the end, we move it to the beginning of B. And when the B pointer gets to the end, we move it at the beginning of A. And this is going to handle the, the difference in length of the list so that eventually those two pointers will be at the same distance from the intersecting point and when we, are moved them at, when we are moving them at the same time they will intersect with C1. So without further ado I'm going to show you how to write the code. First I'm going to check if the first list had a equals equals null or had b equals equals null. If the first list or the second list is empty there's no intersection so I can return null to indicate that there's no intersection. Then, as I said, I'm going to have a pointer A at the beginning of the first list. So I'm going to say pointer to node A gets a value of, of head A. So A is pointing to what head A is pointing to. So 
A is pointing here at the beginning of the first list and B is pointing at the beginning of the second list. Now I'm going to have a while loop. I'm going to say while A is not equal to B. So there are two cases here. One case is that we get to the end of A because there's no intersection. Like in this case here, there's no intersection. So A and B are going to be null. And we're going to break out of the loop and we return null. So we can return A because they point to the same thing. They, they point to null if there's no intersection. Eventually, they're both going to be null. The other case is that there's an intersection. So what we do is that if there's an intersection, we um, they're going to be pointing at the same node, in this case C1. So this is going to be false and we're going to return A. And because they're pointing to the same um, to the same node, then we can return A. So this is going to be fine. And then every iteration, as I said, we're going to move um, the A pointer one step and the B pointer one step. But because we have to handle the difference in the length of the list, we want to have them eventually to be at the same distance so that they can intersect the node if there's an intersection. We, we want to make sure that, for instance, when A gets to the end, when A is null, we want to move it to the beginning of B, and, for the, and the same for B. When B gets to the end, we want to move it to the beginning of A. So we can say A gets a value of A is not equal to null. So I'm asking if A is pointing to something, in this case A is pointing to A1, then just move it to the next node. A gets a value of A.next. Otherwise, A is null, so that means that we got to the end. In that case, because we want to handle the difference, we move it to the beginning of B. So it's going to point to head B. And we do the same for B. B gets a value of B is not equal to null. If B is pointing to something, to a node, then we want to move to the next node. Otherwise, B is null. So we want to move B, um, because it's null, to the beginning of A. And the time complexity for this solution would be big O of m plus n, where m is the length of the first list and n is the length of is the length of the second list. The space complexity would be big O of one. Without further ado, I'm gonna run the code. All right, it seems to be working fine. I'm gonna submit the solution. All right, this is working perfectly. This is one millisecond faster than 97.22% of Java submissions. So as you can see, um, we were able to use these two pointers and by changing um, what they point to at the end, for instance, A was pointing at the first list, but when we got to the end, we changed it to the second list. When B got to the end, we, we changed it to the first list. We were able to compensate for the difference in length. So eventually they're gonna be equidistant um, to the intersecting point and they're gonna be moving at the same time, one step at a time, so they will eventually meet. The, the main idea is that because they're gonna have to traverse um, the same length, both pointers have to go all the way. Um, by swapping the pointers, we can actually, eventually they're going to intersect. They're gonna be at the same place. So please, like the video, don't forget to subscribe, and see you next time.